Welcome to another session with the Earth Nouveau Hub, uh, exploring consciousness as we do every Wednesday at five o'clock. Thanks, ladies, for being here. And today we're gonna we're just gonna make use of the eclipse energies. We're just gonna talk a little bit about what have we been experiencing, a bit stock taking, where everyone's at. Uh, look a little bit at what's going on astrologically, and uh, I've. I've just got something I printed off from a from a from somebody I actually Anne Renee. I don't know if you know Anne Renee. Uh, let me do this actually. Let me read this right away. It's um, return returninggoddess.com. And she does every time there's an eclipse, a full moon, or something. She does uh, transmissions. If anybody is interested in that. Uh, send me a private message or something and I just pass on her email to you she's a lovely lady I did go when was it 2014 2014 I think we went to Greece together and we did some portal opening at on the at the Olymp on the Olymp which was good fun so okay well let me go straight into it um what she's saying because there's so much written all about it and we're going to go for an experience today for ourselves um, a treatment to the future. And when I say future, very, very near future, uh, I would like to think we could do it for the 21st of uh, December for the, uh, the winter solstice. And the, let's just turn this down a bit. I don't want to scream so much. Here we go. And hey, Alfredo. Good, we've got a man as well, some feminine energy, some masculine energy. Fantastic. Um, I was going to say, meditation, 21st of December. Yes, integration of multidimensional energies, basically raising our consciousness to, to higher levels, raising our awareness to higher levels, stepping more into the love energy. And also, if anybody wants to, uh, think of, before we get started, Alfredo, I need to mute you. You are too. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, think of a 3D little goal, 4D, whatever, whatever D you, you still want to apply it to. A goal, maybe. So for me, it would be um, this, this meditation will be part of the next book that's coming out, which I'm working on. So this is for me now going into my goal setting if you wish if there's such a thing still yeah so think of something along those lines as well because those treatments into the future are lit taken literally yeah there's really something going on that you can uh, acknowledge when the time comes 21st of, of december around that time yeah so I'm just going to read what this lady, as I said, Anne Renee was saying about the current energies, the eclipse and everything. And then we talk a little bit about what, um, what you guys are going through, what's going on, the stock taking. So a very powerful full moon in Taurus and lunar eclipse takes place this week on November the 19th. What is today? 17th, so two days time. But of course, there's no such thing as exactly that day. Eclipses are bursts of energy. That is like a booster rocket that propels us into a new orbit, literally a reboot on all levels and their effect lasts for months. Eclipse is extraordinary in that it's the longest partial lunar eclipse since 1440. I, that, I, I found that quite interesting. When the Incas were building Machu Picchu. The full eclipse lasts six hours and two minutes. Full moon always brings up strong emotions and eclipses bring even more intensity. The actual length of the eclipse gives us a clue that, to, to what we can expect. The moon is in Taurus and the sun is in Scorpio. So both fixed signs. And that means that whatever is created at this time is long lasting. So it's very much a creative energy at the moment. Taurus is an earth sign and uh, really is about Mother Earth and the things that bring us pleasure and what we value on our human journey. This includes abundance, our work, food, love, nature, and intimate relationships, and climate. Scorpio is a water sign and wants to dig deep and reveal that which has been hidden to shine the light on, on truth, shine the light on truth. Additionally, there are strong aspects to this eclipse and full moon that involve Uranus, surprises, and breakthroughs. 
and Mars, action and forward movement. So we can expect the unexpected. The numerology of the eclipse, the moon and the sun are both at 27 degrees. Now we've done numerology last time, so which reduces it to a nine, two and seven is nine, signifying endings. We used it for what? Wisdom and, um, what was it? Wisdom and integrity. The number of the day, one nine, 19, one plus nine is 10. And that gives us the code of both beginnings and endings. So the key to navigating the intensity of this eclipse and full moon is to make the intention. And that's what we're going to do today. And to avoid getting triggered and to keep your focus on which is positive, creative and fun. So that's what Anne Renee had to say. And I quite like that. So I thought I'll read that to you guys. Did you have anything that you want to share along those lines? Have you read anything interesting? I want to ask a, a question that I find rather different. Um, mm -hmm. And if anybody knows the answer, I'd appreciate um, <laughs> you saying whatever you know. What what does it, what do they mean when they say the longest eclipse since uh, 1440? I mean, I read this earlier some on one of the different sites um, of them, someone else saying the same thing. I really want to know if anybody knows what that really means. Longest I eclipse. Okay, so I literally, what I understood was that the, literally the timing of the eclipse when, you know, whatever the eclipse is happens because it's six hours and usually it's, it's you know, I don't know, an hour or whatever. I don't actually know. I'm not, Tanya probably knows more about that, but I think it's, it's really <laughs> how long the full eclipse, you know, lasts. But Tanya, what? what yeah, what but I since, since it's a partial eclipse, I would, think that a full eclipse would be um, more appropriate I mean for uh, it for them to say it's the longest so yeah anybody wants to share <laughs> I, I, I heard what what Martina that was what I that was what I got too that it lasted longer but it was almost like like a deeper in breath but why why is that so? That's really one of my question is why why is it so? We will not know the mystery of it. <laughs> I don't know. We need an astrologer or something in our midst. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those. So I would not be able to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who does know who reads that or who, who listens to the replay. Yeah, usually they last just minutes. That's what Nicola says. Yeah, so I think it's it's one of those why. Okay. No, but the eclipse would last when when the when the moon um, gets in front of the sun. I mean, the, the Earth passes or whatever um, in front. It it will last for X amount of minutes. That's understood. Mm -hmm. um, and this and I don't see I don't see it as being any different. Um, for this one, it's just what do they really mean by it's the longest one? Yeah, anyway, I, maybe we'll find We put it out there for anybody who watches the replay yeah. and wants to, wants to give us a, a comment. comment. Yeah. Please, by all means, do. We'll have to do some more research on it <laughs> to find an answer. Yes. Oh, there she is. Jennifer is here as well. Fantastic. Good, we got the crew together. Lovely. So, uh, so I I listened to Pam Gregory's update last night on the eclipse and the full moon, and I always like her. She's um, she's just really kind of straightforward and has been an astrologer for years and years and years. And one of the things she was talking about was the Mars Uranus square and those hard aspects. She was saying that that earth shaking tends to happen during these hard aspects. And she was talking about like Uranus is, is like the, rebel, the rebellious one. And so we might see like social unrest, um, uh, but it could be earth changes as well during this square. And, um, you know, it's like humans breaking out of constraints 
which I think is kind of interesting. And uh, the Jupiter in Aquarius is about expanding community, right? Which is what, you know, Martina is all about. So this is really, um, really strong, strong energy for expanding community right now. And also what I thought was interesting was she talked about the 27 degrees and like this moon is in Taurus at 27 degrees. And I think she said like the next seven or eight moons are going to have that same 27 degree aspect. And so there's, um, there's a theory that this group has starseed hotline. Um, you can see their website if you want, but they look at your astrological chart and aspects about starseed. And if you have 25 to 27 degrees in any one of the planets in your chart, it means that you're, you know, you're a star seed. So I thought that was really interesting that all these moons are coming up and what that, when she was talking about that, what that said to me was there's going to be a lot of now new star seeds awakening during these full moons. Right. It's like a, like those 27, that 27 degrees is a trigger point for people to just go, wait a minute, what's happening? Right. I'm awake now all of a sudden. So those were my thoughts. Well, oh, fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Well, the 27 degrees, that's also what Anne Renee was mentioning here with Uranus, you know, surprises and breakthroughs, you know. And you're talking about uh, star seed. Um, I had a poetry for star seeds um isolation alchemist i had a surprise pa package in my in my post box somebody from ireland calls himself the isolation alchemist has written a poetry for awakening star seed so he's he or she is right on the spot and if you do watch the replay isolation alchemist i thank you very much i haven't had a chance to read it yet but much appreciated thank you so very kind very kind good anyone else has written or read something rather about that oh, that's what i'm looking for no and at the end of the day we all know whatever has been written about it it's all about the experience that we're gonna have so how are you guys doing before we do that uh, that little meditation or long meditation rather Bit of stock taking, the peeps that we haven't seen for some time. How is everyone going on, getting on? Anybody who wants to share something? Everybody feels like Lana. <laughs> yep. Slow motion today. Don't ask me anything. <laughs> Yes, I think it's a slow motion day indeed. <laughs> okay. I always find it find it interesting. I was traveling last week and uh, in in Mexico, which was fabulous, and the water was fabulous, and you know, just really communing with those elements, the wind and the water and uh, and the sand, you know, the earth, and so that was really renewing and refreshing, but. You know, coming back then to the regularly scheduled program is always really, really challenging. Yeah. It's almost like you're decrystallizing and then you're crystallizing back, right? But it's a good, it's a good um, practice for when we start going, you know, off world to get to all these different places and, you know, don't allow ourselves to get um, thrown off our path and our joy. Right. Fantastic. Got two more people come in. Fantastic. Very nice. I've seen my 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 daughter, MC. She um she's having you know interviews at the moment. And this 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 week, well, it's only started, right? What are we Wednesday? But she's doing really well. There's a lot, you know, lots of the job offers that she's having. She's doing really well. She's enjoying herself. And you know, some have already said they 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 offered her a job. So and she's a Taurus. I don't know if it's got anything to do with that, but you know, so the energies are working for her. Marie, good to see you, babes. We haven't seen you for some time. Good Hi, to see you. How, are, how are you on board? Good. Fantastic. Good. Anyone else who wants to share how they're doing at the moment? 
Okay. Shall we do the, the meditation? Uh, oh. Alfredo, please no, no, no. Yeah, talk to us. No. Yeah. <laughs> talk to I was us. Like, I'll let Marcia to go. No, everything, like, I've been stepping up my game, like, full swing. And, like, it's been amazing to see, like, all the collaboration. Like, all my work has been paid off, you know? <laughs> it's, it's been awesome. Like, like, for instance, I've been... And I was like, I always do my revocations, I always do this thing. So I was like, let me just add the water every fucking time I do my revocation. So I got this beautiful creek right behind my apartment. Now I was like to do my long, like I'll do like Mandela rev revocation or I'll come up with equity, union and community, and community, you know, and put it up on the water and just everything, like every day. And just like, um, it's all working with the land, you know, like this. Oh, it's just, yeah, but. Fantastic. Everything is coming together. It's awesome. But I just want to say that. Thank Let's you. So meditate. Yeah. And thanks for sharing, you know, in the group as well, on the Facebook group, you know, to let let us know how you guys are doing and your slabs of meat. I thoroughly enjoyed them. I passed them on to my to my uh, partner in, in Cyprus and said, look, that's what we need. Next time you come home, I want you to bribe. <laughs> <like this." laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Fabulous. And thanks for all the, we've had such great feedback on the group of late, you know, I really want to say thank you, you know, and use that eclipse energy to just uh, show my gratitude, our gratitude, all of us here to all of us here and, um, and manifest, actualize more of that, you know, what else is possible from here for all of us in a, on a, on a communal level, uh, but of course, on an individual personal level as well. Now, no matter which element you're working with, we've got all five today. I put all five in it. And uh, so, you know, there will be something for everyone. And as I said earlier on, I'm just going to put the context here. The meditation is a future treatment meditation, visualization. You know, it is all in it, of course. You know, it's one of my or buy one, get one, get five free, free type of thing. It will be probably part of my next book, uh, which is basic, which is, by the way, called From Challenge to Choice. And that's all I have for now. But I always start with the title. <laughs> so we've got the title. And um, think of it as a multidimensional integration. We have done multidimensional integrations before. There will be clearings in it along those lines. There'll be a treatment around that to raise our awareness, to raise our consciousness, to, you know, to, to step into um, bigger puddles of love, oceans of love, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, if you have a little, you know, very tangible goal other than that in the back of your mind for the 21st of December, it's all geared towards the winter solstice. That's the treatment. For our future self on the 21st of, of December, then please do keep that in mind as well. And we're going to start off, with, I'm going to share the screen, we're going to start reading, we're lots of, we're 10 people here, so that's great, we're just going to start off, grab one paragraph and read it, and read it slowly, it's quite worded, and then when we get to the elements, I'm going to take over so that you can just sit back um, and really have a lovely experience with those elements, yeah? Okay, so let's get this shared and see how that works. We should know this by now. <clears throat> um, am I sharing? Hold on, let me, let me. Oh, did I lose it? While you're doing that, Martina, can yes, I just share? Please. Can I a dream because you've just triggered it when you said have we 10 people on the group today did you say yes yes i had a dream last night that um andrew and all of the group that i did the study with that included you and laura and all of ye came to visit me at my house and it was an unplanned visit but during the visit everybody decided that they were going to stay over so I decided that I would actually try to put you a lot up. I said, there's no need for you to go to look for accommodation. I, I see here. So we said, let's count the number 
and we counted the number of people and there were 10 people. Fabulous. Yes. 10. Again, yeah. go. New beginnings, right? 19th right. of November is the eclipse officially. One and nine is 10. Mm. We're working it, girls and boys. Yeah. I had to share that when you said we've 10 people and I thought oh my god that was the dream and I, I started you know deciding which bedrooms I could put the 10 of you into and all of that but it's this it's the number 10 this is about like that's why I'm sharing it just because of the synchronicity of that fantastic remember remember I was the number 10 the one and the zero you are the 10 yes Lana all oh, new beginnings nice. yes. thank you Mary welcome now I'm I, on my mobile. I'll do my best to read, but it's terribly small. So if, if I don't chip in, I will try. But it's 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 very small. I'm on the mobile today. Sorry okay. about that. No, no worries at all. We have, we have enough people, and it's not them that many anyway. So just you know, but it's nice okay. to have a flow and just go with one paragraph. It's enough. Yeah. So we all get something to say. And as I said, once we get to the elements, I'll take over. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you see it all? Is it all there? Yes. Okay. Then let's get started. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Who wants to kick it off? I'll go. Yes. <clears throat> Take a couple of deep breaths here. Drop all your barriers. Let go of the known and unknown expectations projections, any conclusions, hopes and fears, and then just lie or sit as you connect to the earth below you. Now you don't have to lie down your body, but what if you could just lie down, all there is is to lie down and let down any of those letdowns even more. And as you do all that, you keep breathing easily, steadily, freely, completely, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely. We are going to utilize the powerful November eclipse energies to invoke life-changing experiences and fully receive the energies thereof. Be open to engage your hindsight and foresight. Now, connect to and call forth your future self for the expressed purpose of sending a treatment to you, the mighty I am presence future self on the 21st of December, the forthcoming winter solstice 2021. This treatment is an invitation to heal, to remember, to fortify and to awaken your I am apex presence now. You are here to acknowledge your birthright as your authentic avatar expression by calling forth all your soul shards, parts, and aspects, all your lost, forgotten, hidden, bankrupt I am presence, all other corporeal and non-corporeal companions of soul density to join you in your multidimensional journey of experiencing and self-actualizing as part of the greater dreamtime awakening. As you ignite and share sacred trust within the divine circle of your soul selves and soul family, others, you will raise to the you will rise to the level of supreme consciousness to actualize and con continuously outcreate the sacred wisdom of affinity, the attraction of light vibration or substance for other, for another, for the purpose of divine co-creation in this fifth world of peace. I do know that you are now wondering if, where, when this is all going to manifest and become real. Will you be able to do it? Are you worth it? Where are those experiences going to lead you? 
who is coming into play and share with you here and now, in the past and in the future? Can you trust them? Do you have what it takes to fully embody non-linear stamps of time and make them real now? How will you know it is real? Will it help to lead you astray from your day, from your worries and fears? Will it safely guide your plans of wondering what is next to magically wonder about in this earthly and multidimensional macro and micro existence? It's all right. It's a good thing to wonder without aimlessly wandering. Like a child, keep exploring ideas. Nurture your heart-based expressions. Share your intuitive inspirations with an expansive universal quality. Give yourself permission to communicate with all your infinite potentials within the outside, within and outside the cosmic mind. Tap into the organs. Sorry, I just, I'm not sure if I missed a line. Tap into the wisdom of the morphogenic fields, into the DNA of your physical body, your tubes and channels, arteries and organs. Participate in the endless flow of mutual receiving without construction, contraction, compaction, without hindrance and resistance. Presence in all its simplicity is the magic to your multifaceted identity, your true beingness and the doorway to true love and intimacy with the self and others. <clears throat> all the old inventions blocking the receiving all the disharmonic patterns that you have constructed and locked into your body and mind. That <laughs> Sorry, this pop-ups. That set you up for rejection and hinder the integration of higher consciousness into this I am presence. Self, are you now willing to loosen the grip? Deconstruct the dams to the natural flow of evolution. Please now unlock the secret doors to who you really are and wave in all companions of destiny to work together naturally, harmoniously. Take a moment to breathe and be still. Allow past and future time skills, talents, and capabilities to down or upload as memories into your very skull cap with total ease and clarity, always maintaining your earthly footing. Be open and aware as this can trigger a fully embodied somatic healing response in this moment of now. You are turning the energy of echoes of time-based traumas and dramas into wisdom, knowingness and inspiration for new creations, co-creations and pleasures. Cut the 3D crap and open yourself up to full I am integration through cellular transfiguration, all ill-advised, empathetic, and pathetic parts of the self that have kept you endlessly Looping through fake nonlinear timestamps, please now diminish them to zero balance minus infinity. You're using the potent eclipse energies to weed out the dream and the wake stories of destructions, force protection, old misidentified fears of having to fight and defend against this big bad world and everyone and everything in it. No more wiggling out of taking balanced responsibility and remaining separate, small, falsely free in this illusion of false sovereignty that only creates more distance between the you and your use. Have you judged 
decided, concluded, computed that you are better off alone? Does self-mastery really never ask for support to always be self-sufficient? There is healing in acknowledging your pain in the presence of others. All these times in this and other lifetimes, were you stopped and blocked receiving, or are you now willing to put an end to all this, that misery and open yourself up to seeing vulnerability for the strength it actually is? Unlimited means to receive fully, limitlessly, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All these nonlinear personas, your own soul sentience that you are still competing with you. The ones you have obligated yourself to and that lock you into a forced place of need and despair and confine you to forced receiving. Stop making them more important than your new choices. Call them forth, see them, heal them, and send them back to whence they came from to never return to your body, your reality ever again. You are being the invitation for what you desire. You become the energy of love, of joy, abundance, and success. From now on, can you claim your uniqueness and choose your company for no other reason than fun, joy, and blissful co-creation? Let's now acknowledge all the intergalactic, interdimensional, and earthy, earthly feeding tubes that still hold you prisoner and keep you from attracting and meeting your natural signature frequency matches. In order to jointly manifest harmonized heart frequencies in the now and for all eternity, please now sever, cut, rip, slash, slice, slit, burn and release them from your energy field. They will dissolve without a trace through the pure white light in your beating heart. The lies that you have brought of what it takes to be you, the need to not lose yourself or your sense of self, having to keep yourself away from all the crazies are losing power. We can no longer stay disconnected and use false separation to overshadow true self-mastery and sovereignty in the implicate oneness. It's time to wake up. Shine your authentic light. We are all one. Now, as you keep breathing in this relaxed state of raw and unencumbered wonder, allow yourself to drop even more fully into your body now. Take a couple more breaths here. Inhale all the way up into the crown and exhale. Close your eyes. Take your focus onto the third eye. Now let go of all thoughts, feelings, structures, significances, and emotions, and allow your intuition to embody the energy of knowingness as you allow yourself to drop into the sacrum, expanding your creative energies a thousandfold. Now imagine the symbol of the Olympic rings. Do you know those five colors? those five colored rings linking up with each other. And as you do, think of five different beings in body or outside of body you would like to co-create with. Those beings with or without bodies who are willing to be in their truth and integrity about their light and shadow aspects. So you can garner profound insights through sharing purpose and relationship with them. Take a few moments to conjure up five of those beings. Then now as you, as you choose your first companion, please do ask him or her to present you with the earth ring, the red one. 
have it laid out in front of you and then step right into it. Red is presenting the solid state of matter here in the mind. Earth and Tao's resolve, the power to withstand, to heal, to commit and to ground. As you perceive this red earth ring around you, you can review important memories, thoughts that come up with regards to stability, permanence, rigidity, Invite your nails, your bones, your teeth, your flesh, your skin, your hair, your beard, your moustache, tendons to assist you in this process. What comes up for you? Can you smell the earth? Can you fully ground and receive what nature offers to you? Remember, whilst you are in resistance, things cannot change. They will only create more fear and endless worry. Let go now of investing yourself in anticipation whilst losing your footing in the now. The South, Earth, the Chamber of Awakening, where self-healing becomes your mastery. You are invited to participate and co-create with Earth. Now use this opportunity and place your offerings into that ring with you and draw inspiration through this co-creation with your first companion and the ring of Earth. Now choose companion number two. Ask him or her to give you the ring of water, the blue one, and step right into it. Blue characterizes eternal flow and is always unstoppable by nature. It's a liquid state. It's a majority composer of various fluid substances inside your body, like blood, lymph, urine, even emotions that often possess a liquid, sticky, clingy, cohesive quality. As you feel this water ring around you, can you feel the water flowing through your being, distributing nutrition, carrying waste away, Regulating your body's temperature, strengthening and moistening your being, your immune essence. What comes up for you that requires resolution? What wants to be seen? What wants to be heard? Allow your sense of taste and tongue that are water dominant in nature to assist you. Surrender all feelings and emotions. Become them to transcend them. And turn them into heart-based intuition. Allow deep emotional patterns to be transformed, brought forward through the courage to be intimate in your relationship with self and others. In the West, water, the chamber of surrender, we learn sadness, we learn about grief, of losing loved ones, to be part of praise and celebration of the sustenance of life and living. You are invited to participate and co-create with water. Take this opportunity now and place your offerings into the ring with you and your companion. 
draw inspiration through this co-creation. Now choose your third companion. Ask him or her to hand you the ring of fire, the yellow one. Step right into it. Yellow is the power to transform, burn and illuminate. The galvanizing force of the alchemical journey, the melting away of any resistance, the revolutionary spark in the body, the agni, the digestive powers for all foods and substances, be they solid, be they liquid or gaseous in nature. Thanks to fire, they can get transformed or converted into tissue and energy. In the mind, fiery intelligence and fiery emotions, along with passion, lust, as well as anger, contribute to a fiery experience of the being. What comes up for you here as you look at the great transformational force of fire? Allow your vision, visual sense that are fire dominant in nature to assist you. Those you have drawn to you hold the ability to assist you in your own transformation integration. There are no mistakes. Be willing to look deeply into the truth held within any relationship. Let go of all the times you made yourself or others wrong for lacking joyful enthusiasm to make it work instead of just walking away and let them go. The East, fire, the chamber of integrity, holding treasures of your transformation and transfiguration. You are invited to participate and co-create with fire. Place your offerings into the ring and draw inspiration through this co-creation. Now choose companion number four. Ask him or her to pass you the ring of ether, the white one. Step right into it. It's the space in which everything happens with an unlimited point of view. The vacant spaces inside the body, big and small channels, along with sound and auditory sense are predominant in space by nature. It is the field that is simultaneously the source of all matter, the space in which it exists. Here sound represents the entire spectrum of vibration. What comes up for you as you feel the ether ring around you? Allow the sound of ether, all echoes of time and no time, to create expansive potentials around you. Fully receive your compassionate, authentic heart song that is being played in the center, the ether, the chamber of grace. You're invited to participate and co-create with ether. Now place your offerings into the ring and draw inspiration through this co-creation. Now choose your fifth and last companion in this healing future treatment meditation. Ask him or her to give you the ring of air, the green one. Step right into it. Green is the element that is mobile and eternally dynamic with no arrest whatsoever. It's constant motion, speed is its unique characteristic. Respiration, twinkling of eyes, all subtle movements, including that of nerves, contraction and relaxation, movement, propulsion and retention. What comes up for you as you feel that ring of air around your body? Allow the touch and tactile sense to assist you here. 
drop all evaluation and your reactive nature and allow the breeze of intimate presence softly embrace you, whether alone or with another. Be open, be here, be present. Innocence, trust, simplicity and joyful wonder. Presence is simple, your natural state of being. The true north, the chamber of gratitude and joy, calling you forth to deeply engulf yourself in your dreaming and awake mind. You're invited to participate and co-create with air. Now place your offerings into the ring and draw inspiration through this co-creation. Focus back onto the breath. Be still. Perceive, receive the magic of all five rings swirling around you. Now imagine all of them to merge into one. What do you experience as they do? See, taste, smell, hear, feel that energy. Expand it out well beyond your body. Your offerings, your learnings, presence, all alchemizing into one. Perceive, know, be and receive them. Now, is there a symbolic representation of this integration that you can take away with you? A symbol, a thought, a word, a sound. Keep that symbol in your mind over the next few days and weeks until the 21st of December to keep reminding you of that integration. Allow it to grow, to expand, create more opportunities, possibilities. Now having focused your attention to rising, to raising your awareness with the help of the five elements and your companions, will you now close your eyes again just in case you've opened them? Take a few more breaths here. Allow the healing integration to continue. And with gratitude, let your inner mind acknowledge your victories once more. Let yourself be bathed in the healing light and sound from the eternal source you're always connected to. New beginnings, new perceptions, new allies and friends. As you express more authentically who you are, you will draw your expanded soul family closer to you. With a new sense of oneness, your guides, guardians, and earthly companions will support your ability to manifest your inspired visions and dreams. Be still, often. Listen and recognize the many eyes and hearts around you that spark the remembrance of sacred trust in your unfolding. Now give permission to your future self to accept that healing and continue with its process over the next couple of days and weeks. Don't expect, don't resist. And more versions of yourself will align with your signature frequency to assist you in exploring future possibilities that you have not yet considered possible. You're learning many things. You're healing. Follow the future self to the edge of unknowingness. Places of new insights will provide you with new understandings and authentic truths. Open yourself up. Fully receive this healing with gratitude for the blissful, potent co-creation. 
couple more deep breaths here along the spine. Then please stretch. Open your eyes. Feel refreshed as you become fully alert. <clears throat> Ready to share your, whatever you want to share, if you want to share. I'll share. I saw, um, planting seeds for like revolutionary shifts in community and just um, expansion and the words that came to me at that moment were unstoppable mo momentum. Like that's what I feel like we're going into into the first of the year past the December eclipse is unstoppable momentum. Great meditation. Thank you, Jennifer. It's funny you say that because I've been coining it. I've been calling it spiritual momentum overdrive because it's just been like, it's just been flowing intense lately. It was a beautiful meditation, by the way, Martina. Was, yes, I've been playing around with rings, like my own meditation creations after what Tanya did because with the, the rings and I'm always playing with tensor rings and then like a Shang-Chi movie, like all these rings, I was like just making meditations with rings. You know? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Did you get a symbol in the end? It's nice to have a little symbol in the end, a word or whatever it is. You can use it as an anchor, you know, whatever that symbol was when those, when those rings were merging. All the information, all the energy is in that symbol. So you just have to bring it into your mind or say the word, whatever that was. They will all flood back into the body. The body remembers. Just like what they do in, in you know, the tennis players. No, I don't know, nose, who's the guy is the nose this, pinches ass, whatever he does. It's all, all anchors. <laughs> cool. I was just um, thinking the same thing. Um, Alfredo was thinking about the movie um, Chang Chi with the <laughs> 10 rings and... Um, when you were talking about all the rings and I was imagining all how the guy was using the rings to, um, you know, put energy out or do whatever he needed to do with the rings, you know, to create whatever he is intending to create in the moment. So um, for those who have not seen the movie, it's a pretty uh, interesting movie to see that and with the dragons in the end and so on. And, you know, it's a, it's on Disney Plus. So it's quite interesting. Um, the number 10 also came up in the movie with, you know, he had five rings on each, each arm. Um, and the guy was like a thousand years old. So that was, something else uh, that was pretty interesting as well because we've heard Andrew talk about these ancient guys and in inner earth how old they are and uh, that was very interesting for me to to watch that movie um, and relate it back to galactic history in itself so I wanted to share that thanks thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, Tanya brought that uh, movie to my attention. I, I went the very next day. Loved it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I, I, that was really beautiful, Martina. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, for me, it was a lot about receiving, mm. right? Receiving the gifts that Earth has to offer, right? That our spirit team and people in our lives, right? I, I, I know like myself, for one, you know, we're 
have had to overcome so much conditioning running through the ancestral lineage about giving, 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 right? And not sitting back and actually acknowledging being worthy of receiving, right? And uh, so that was a really, you know, really beautiful acceptance and allowance and yeah. Thank you. And for me, yeah. that symbol that, that came up at the end was a rose that just kind of like grew up out of the rings. Fabulous, fabulous. And this is, this is the thing with, um, with receiving, with the being present. There's no such thing. You can't, be pre you can't receive if you're not being present. It's almost like, um, and what lots of people forget, receiving is not necessarily just the good stuff. Receiving is linked to non-judgment. To the unlimited point of view if we have a limited point of view if we still run the patterns of judgment conclusion yeah even identifications all of that will not allow us to receive fully and completely and that goes for the negative it goes for the positive at the same time and then the other thing, which is also in the, in the meditation, is the forced receiving. The way we grew up, all of us, literally every single one of us, the, the way we're still living through what's going on on the planet has been going on for eons, is that forced receiving, that having to adhere to rules and regulations that actually don't necessarily work for the nature the true nature that we are, but we still have to receive it. So there is this overloading of forced receiving that then keeps us from, okay, no, thank you. Keeps us in separation. And the other energy in, in the meditation is obviously looking beyond separation now, understanding the self-mastery, understanding the sovereignty uh, from a place of, I'll always be that. Now it's time to look, how can I now go back into that oneness? How can I go back into that connection? Keep the connection in the creativity with other point of view. And it's not easy, obviously. And uh, that ease and joy that we keep on talking about. Those are really triggers. When something starts feeling really heavy, then we know we're, it's probably not for us even though it might sound perfect for us. The body says, no, sometimes trust or trust the body. That forced receiving, I mean, you know, we've talked about abuse and, you know, what is abuse? There's so much, you know, about abuse, but forced receiving is that, you know, being even, even being, you know, put into that girl box when you're a baby, you gotta wear pink. That's forced receiving, you know. And that creates our self-defense mechanism. And then what do we do in order to get out of this, away from this forced receiving? We become masters of getting out of our bodies. The bodies might still be there listening, but you're no longer present, you're no longer there that self-defense mechanism. It's, it's a form of um, protection at that time. Yeah, and we've all done it. We became really good at it, getting out of our bodies. But at some stage, the level of our awareness now, at some stage of the evolution, we have to now, having done the healing, we have to come back. Another form of you know, getting out of the, getting away from the forced receiving is the su superiority complex, yeah? So many of us have been there. So many of us have seen it. I know what you need. I am spiritual, more spiritual than you. That's a defense mechanism. That's something, you know, we, we start building up so that we don't have to look at what's going on right here you're telling other people what to do stepping on their journeys 
no matter how fucked up their journey is, it's their journey. Let them have it. They might have had an amazing lifetime before they came in for this time. That's what they need to learn. Superiority comes also through anger, not showing. When you're angry, show it, allow it. Share your pain, share your anger. It doesn't mean vomit on other people, but allow yourself to be who you are in that moment. Okay. Thanks for coming, Andrea. She's left, yeah. You know, it's that superiority, oh, I'm never angry. I'm always positive. I'm always this or that. A bullshit. You're human. Yeah. That's part of that. If we can't let go of those mechanisms, those defense mechanisms, and, and go into that complete receiving, how are we supposed to do it with our own soul shots? Force receiving is, is overlooked. I, I came, is again, one of those things I learned with, with access. It's really, really good. I was a forced receiver. We all have been. And I always took the easy way out. I just left my body. Yeah. And you don't have to be sexually abused in order to leave you. But it's just a conversation. I see it all the time. I'll talk to somebody and they don't want to hear. Chup, off they go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> the wall comes up. And you're just talking to the body. There's nobody behind. Presence, gone. It's okay. Once you know what you're dealing with, you can, you know, work with it. Have you had experiences with forced receiving? And, you know, what do we do? What is the mechanism? Yes, Martina, I, I would have experiences of that. And actually, as I'm listening to you talking there, I'm also aware that I too would have engaged in forcing something on, on others when I was younger and when I was less aware of what I was doing and thinking it was the right thing and preparing, we would say, my children to be part of the community and to fit in. And if they didn't fit in, they'd be isolated and they'd be left out. And, you know, it would be done, done with the best of intentions, but at the same time, I can I can acknowledge how I would have engaged in that in, in and maybe still do at times, but I would say I'd be more aware of it now. But yeah, I would have been involved, I would have experienced lots of it actually growing up, especially in the culture here in Ireland, you know, it was very church orientated. And because of that, there was a lot of, of forced receiving of religion and religious beliefs and yeah. doing and not doing and judging and blaming and all of that kind of thing. So would I say I have I have overcome all of that? No. No, it, it'll be a lifetime's work to overcome that, really. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I feel that the fact that I'm working with it and I'm very aware of it is enough, actually. That, that's enough to, I don't have to look for the result or the end or the conclusion. It's okay, it's a process and I'll, you know, I'll work through it when, when it comes up and that's it. But I'm aware of it now. And, and that awareness in itself makes all the difference because it makes it so... Maybe not that easy in the beginning, but to say, hey, I was out of line here. I, I'm sorry. You know, this is not about right or wrong. I'm not making you right. I'm not making you wrong. Not making myself right or wrong. Important, you know. It's it easy to, to forgive, you know. Forgiveness comes in there, yeah. Forgive the receiving of it. Uh, we say in my childhood, it does make it easier, yeah, because you realize that, yes, you were so indoctrinate, indoctrinated that I would have done some of that in myself, you know, and I'd have been one of those that would be a real church gore because for me, I was spiritual. And, and when I was a child, I would have thought that was the way to do it. And that was the thing to do. And that's where you found God. He was always somewhere else outside of you. And he was always bigger and better. And, you know, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll just share while, I, while I'm speaking about the rings. You were talking about the different rings. And the one that really sort of impacted on me when I when I stepped into there today was the white one, the ether one. Mm -hmm. And I realized that actually the dream changed me. I was in a different energy this morning when I woke up after the dream and I went to the shops. Um, I had to do some grocery shopping and various things. And I was actually like with two feet on the ground, but 
somewhere else as well. I could I saw people differently. I stopped and looked at some people as they just smiled. I didn't know them. And I and I was so aware of, gosh, I wonder where I know them from. And I wonder how, you know, through the eons of time. And it it was um it was a lovely kind of experience, actually. And it was just when I went into that one, it reconnected me to that feeling that I had this morning after the dream. And as I went around the shops and and, that, and if I got a flower, too, as the gift. Oh, of it. Yeah, fabulous, fabulous. And I, I'm glad you're saying that because, you know, dreams have always been, uh, you know, transformative, have the capacity to transform. But I think now, I don't know you guys, but having about three, four dreams at the same time, you know, or consecutively. And, and that really makes a difference. As, as Mary says, you, you do wake up the next day and you feel different. And that is the possibility that is out there at the moment, you know. So allow yourself to be open to that. You know, we've done so much work and yes, you know, everything is a process, but things can change very dramatically, very quickly. Breakthroughs. We're in that kind of energy now, aren't we, where things are changing. They feel kind of quite erratic at times, but not in a in a, in a good kind of way. I, I, I enjoy that kind of energy, I think, because things are changing quite fast and unexpectedly. And it's like, oh, gosh, didn't see that coming. It's literally magic. Yeah. It's it. it we are stepping into that space where we can magically create mm. one moment to the next because what what is it it's just raising your level of awareness and stepping into that that level that is available at any time mm. it's just that it's just that choice and often it doesn't seem like a choice but it is that. As I was walking through the shops, actually, I, I was thinking at one stage or feeling, gosh, what would it be like if you could walk around here and be aware of everything and be aware of the lifetimes and be aware of the timelines and be aware of who everybody is to you and, and everybody is to each other. What an awareness, oh, what, how magical that would be. And yet I think it's right there, actually, for us now. It is. It is. Absolutely. But of course, what, what comes in, the voices come in, oh, no, 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 it's too much. You would be overwhelmed, just like, you know, you couldn't handle the, the aliens and you couldn't do that. And who says? Who says? Yeah. We yeah. Who says? Try us. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's too much, well, then, you know, you turn it down yourself. But and I love the, the, you asking the question, what would it be like from this place of wonder, magical wonder? and then you know there's a saying i think you'll never be given more than you can handle right no i believe that everything will be matching the level of your awareness and all this awakening business is raising our levels of awareness we have to stop that self-defense mechanism we can't just walk away anymore how many times have you walked away from situations? Can't be bothered. Isn't that a, the perfect, can't, I can't be bothered with this. What does that mean? You're not choosing for you and as you. Can't be bothered. No. That doesn't, I'm not saying stick with something that doesn't work for you. Just don't take the way out. Disappear. Leave the body from that perspective. No, stick it out. Look at it. Be aware. Let it go through you. Don't have to take it on. Don't have to make it yours. All of that. It, it gets to a stage where you, where you can actually really enjoy whatever happens around you. You're just having a laugh. I was like, okay, interesting. You know, you look at it and you walk away. But there is not that, oh, can't be bothered, need to get out. No, it's not that. I, this experience of, of ether, you know, I mean, each one of the rings had its own experience for me, but 
this experience of ether, what came up was the light and the shadow, right? Being equal parts, equal parts of us. And that's where the balance is. And if we can, we can, you know, love and accept all of that, right? And just kind of like hold it, hold it and hold space, right? For that integration and love and acceptance of the darkness and the light and find you know that love and joy within within all of it then that's that's really where where you start getting to the yeah. sweet spot and start recognizing then the multi-dimensionality mm. because it, there's no you know they're here in this physical dimensionality there there has to be there's both and to be able to say, la, la, no, you're not really there, shadow. I don't, you know, that just doesn't work. You can yeah. see, I mean, I see it with, with so many people who, who, you know, just la, la, that's not really there. Get back down there or get behind, you know, just don't look, can't look at, at the darkness within. Yeah. And it creates all kinds of energy imbalances in the body. It's almost like the in breath without the out breath. Right? You can't just keep breathing in. You have to breathe out too. It, it, do you know what comes to mind? It's holding the breath. Oh, I just hold my breath. How long? How long are you going to do that? No, you have to. You have to breathe in and breathe out. Resistance is not going to get you anywhere. Resistance just creates persistence. Yeah, we've gone beyond the mirror principle now. I mean, it's always very cool to go back to it, you know. Um, but we've gone beyond that now. You know, it, the realization of a self master is is really to say, well, you know, all kinds of people are being attracted to you now just because of the light that you carry, the vibration, the frequency, the harmony. Yeah, I like the energy. It's very calm. Mm. Does anyone else want to share something about their experiences, their dreams? Got really cool dreams at the moment. Weird shit. Makes no sense. Now, remind yourself one thing. I had a had an interesting dream. Uh, I think it was last night. <laughs> it's too long to to talk about, but it was like. It ended because I woke up because a cat wanted the food. I thought, no, 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 hang on a second. I have to carry on. I was awake and I, I made up the story that I would have liked in the dream to be the follow on. I just wrote that. I wrote down bits and pieces of my dream, which was very specific. Very, there was, they were, they were, they were uh, giving out gin, the drink, gin, the spirit. But it was interesting because it wasn't distilled. It was the juniper berries with peppercorns in the liquid. Very, very weird, you know? don't even know the gin is made out of juniper berries, but obviously it is. Um, and then, anyway, whatever that was, I just made up the story afterwards that I wanted, uh, how I wanted that dream to end. It made me really happy. You can do that. Yeah. We talked about that before. But, you know... If you didn't have the opportunity in the dream, if you're not lucid enough to make the changes, make them when you're awake, semi-awake, or even awake now, doesn't matter. Write your own story, right? The other thing is I just wanna mention, whilst you were talking, Tanya, I was thinking, once you get into the multidimensional aspect, you're also starting to recognize the difference between long-term and short-term short, short agendas. You know, I used to be so impatient. It has to be now, it has to be now. Why is it ha not happening now? And then when you ask the question, is this, is this for now or 50 years time or even 500 years time? Oh yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, because we often create in the future. We think it's in the now, but no, we create already in the future. And then wonder why it doesn't happen in the now. 
So do ask the question, is this long-term agenda? Yes, long-term agenda. Good. Don't worry about it. All that was required now in this lifetime was to think about it, you know, so that it can come into fruition, I don't know, 500 years time. And then once you, you become, you make friends with your multidimensional you, this lifetime is a drop in the ocean. So you might as well just have some fun with it, right? I'm not really worried, long-term agenda. And the other thing that's coming through for me, since nobody else wants to talk to that, <laughs> saying one more thing, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, what was that? Yeah, it's that, you know, gratitude. We always talk about gratitude as an antidote to judgment and everything. And yes, but I'm starting to experience the gratitude now on a different level. It, it doesn't matter how small the, the task is or the achievement is. It's like just me sitting here, having the computer, having my phone. That's huge, right? I mean, we've just done a future treatment, right? Now, there was a time where we did a future treatment to be here now. And now we're here. We've done it. I never thought of that because of my because of my walking experience. You know, when Andrew said to me, "This is you are your past, future, present, now," and I'm like, "Oh shit, yes! I made that treatment. I manifested that there and then to be here now." And when I speak, I know there's no differentiation anymore. But some sometimes I just take the soul outside. Okay, let's have a chat here. Just the big fa fraction, faction, the soul faction that walked in. So she or he, she says, well, what's your problem? <laughs> That's what I work towards. We've, we've, we're there, we've arrived. Okay, right. Just pulls me back when I go out. Oh, we need to be something more than we are. And she just says, no. What are you, are you kidding me? I worked so hard for that. I want to just bloody enjoy it now. Eat what's there to eat, wear what's there to wear, and whatever else you find enjoyable. So it's fun to be aware of your multidimensional aspects. It's fun. Did you have, was it okay for you to bring the five companions up? Were they all like in body or did you have some companions out, out of body? Mine were all out of body. Out of body? Yeah. Interesting, right? Mm. Out of body, Nicola, too. Interesting. Mine, Mine as well. Interesting. Yeah, out of body for me, too. Just seeing them standing in front of me, handing the rings. I kind of step mm -hmm. into them and let the magic take place. <laughs> Fantastic. Just shows. So cool you know, visuals. That, that time now where we seem to be losing so many friends, people, you know, with the separation of density, it's an invitation for us to work with our multidimensional selves, with our companions, without bodies. I often have to remind myself when I'm on my own, sitting on my couch and knitting or drawing, thinking, what the fuck is going on? Why am I on my own here? <laughs> oh, yes. That's what I manifested, right? Because I'm supposed to be working with the unseen. Oh, I forgot. Yes. Yeah. There's a reason. There's a reason why we've been with all these people in the beginning of my life. It's because if I'd be there now, I wouldn't have the time to do the work that I want to do. I need a lot of time to be on my own to rejuvenate, to work with the unseen. I'm really enjoying it. So it becomes more or less less relevant to me what's, what's happening around me, you know? It's that thing, you know, it, it, there's no more having to fix anything or having to, not even the, from a treatment perspective. It's like, yeah, if people ask me, of course. As long as you guys come on, we'll do this. If you, if you stop coming on, well, we stop it. That kind of thing. 
and I'm no longer I'm not like I don't know about you guys but there's other stuff coming in there's a reason why we're letting go of the old and this is what this energy is all about so don't allow yourself to to be like oops things have changed you know don't go back in the box it's so quickly we go back in the box stay in a discomfort took me it took me some time oh god it took me some took me years to be very honest because i got out of corporate 2008 took me years to allow myself to be on the couch at two o'clock in the afternoon watching a movie receive that mm. all of a sudden having a partner bringing the money home and not me Ooh, god austrian independence and you know the, the most amazing thing is and tanya you've i've seen your your note on your relationship it's like um the less the more i backed off and got onto my journey the more uh, successful my partner became He's never been one. He doesn't want to know what I'm talking about. It's just like bullshit. He knows it all. He knows it all anyway. So he doesn't have to talk about it. It's not his thing. Um, but the more I backed off, because let's face it, we're, I've been a huge narcissist. Yeah. We always are oh, the narcissist the guy. I've been a huge narcissist in terms of you need to do this. You need to stop smoking. You need to do this. You need to do this. Just because there was a rightness to it in terms of yes it would be good you know if he does who am i superior bitch right to tell him that good thing with him is was in and out never ever fucking listened anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> that was the the savior of our relationship he never listened i was like ah until one day i thought okay well this is obviously not going to work something is not right here i have to really look at something here and they're giving each other space, ether. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of ether. I, um, I saw, saw that same, you know, see that same thing. You know, having been married, my anniversary was last week, for those who don't know, 11-11. And been married 21 years. And it, exactly that, right? The more, the more I backed up and let my partner be who he was and stopped like trying to you know control what I thought was you know was what he should be then the better our relationship got right yeah. and the better we could just share you know flowing freely from a place of who we are hmm. I wouldn't be sitting here today if I wouldn't have persevered in this relationship. And I, I always keep thinking, oh, I have commitment issues. 23 years, Tanya, I don't have commitment issues. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have been going through hell. Mainly because <laughs> I created it. Control freak of note, you know, martyr, narcissist, yeah, everything. We do it all under the name of we know we want to help. We know better. It's fucking judgment left, right, and center. <laughs> I think when, when I first started doing Reiki, I wanted to fix everyone. Hmm. Like, oh, I can, I can fix that. I can fix that. But I can't heal anyone. They can only heal themselves, right? I can hold space and, and you know, open up that, you know, help them open their energy flow and, and all that kind of stuff, right? And the work you know, work I do is seeing that big picture, right? And where people are stuck and where the energy is not flowing and, you know, so, but you can lead that horse to water, right? Yeah. Can't do anything that someone's not willing to step up to the plate for. And, you know, this, it's such a blind spot, isn't it? Because it comes from a true caring and kindness. Yeah but it needs to be redefined like everything. I had to redefine everything relationship. What's it, what's it like to be a mother? What's it like to be a therapist? Everything had to be completely redefined every single word, like what we're doing often on the show. What does this really work for me? Mm -hmm. If I would have not persevered, well, 
I wouldn't be the person. I would have gone probably into the same thing. I would have stayed in Austria, probably, you know, had three, four kids by now, total distraction, never really taken that path of remembering to the extent that I have now. So I only have gratitude. And I've turned this kindness. And there's a time when you go oh. separation and sovereignty and everything, and you stop that kindness. But that's when it turns into separation because we are all innately kind and caring. It's just, we have to redefine those energies and look at what is, what is actually true compassion without compassion. That is the word, compassion that expresses all of that without stepping onto other people's journeys. And that is, I can say now from what I've experienced so far, a thousand times more powerful. And there's no need to even talk to the people. You can sit in silence and meditate and just have tears running down and that's compassion or no tears, it's compassion too, whatever it is for you. And it's funny because when you, when you get across that bridge of passion, you know, everything has to be, I'm so passionate, you know, and all of a sudden I'm not passionate. Shit, what the hell now? What do I do now? I lost my passion. Because passion in itself, remember we talked about this once, it is an ego value in a way, depending on how you define it. And then you come into the compassion. So the passion comes back. It's just a different, if you play with word, you know, so don't stop the kindness. You can't, whatever you want to call it, caring, kindness, compassion, without obviously stepping on any. any. And you know, I've seen this with lots of things. The last couple of years, it, it gets manifested outside. I didn't want to do a Christmas tree. I didn't want to do, you know, oh, this is bullshit. This is this, I don't know. This is just buying into what's going on. And uh, this year is totally different. I actually want to have a Christmas tree but not because I'm buying into anything, but I'm no longer resisting anything. It's just nice to have, right? Because that's what Emma wants. But having said that, I actually like it too, because I remind, I remember I always like doing it because it's creative. You have different trees, you have different decorations. What's that? MG, will your first book be restocked? Oh, yeah. That they print it on demand. Yeah. Look to pick it up today. Yeah. It's a, it's a prose book. So, you know, um, I love it. <laughs> it's a prose book. So it's, it's a bit different than the one we did together with uh, Mary and uh, Laura and, and AB. And Bruce, the one I'm, I'm working on now will be slightly more, what's the word, concrete. Yeah, good. So anything else? Thank you. I'll just add to that because I've been having a lot of success just like like you were saying, like just not so much caught up in the words or trying to get people to understand, just kind of just holding space and just doing my thing. And the more I hear myself, the more I've seen everybody else around me like change and their awareness increase. And it's been cool. It's been really cool. Well, the same experience, Alfredo. I've got uh, I got a couple of people that I've worked with for years. I mean, just. Southern Baptist rednecks. I never wanted to talk about anything sparkly that now are sending me pictures of the moon and talking about how they got goosebumps when this picture came up right after they were talking to somebody about it. So I think it percolates. Uh, what it, the more you do for yourself, the more it helps people around you. Yeah, no, heck yeah, because I, I hear people, I mean, I'm more observant because I'm saying less. I'm just more aware of myself. And then I've seen other people like it, just like the topics they bring up, like the stuff they're talking about, like, whoa, just like, watching it go down. I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, I just seen all my work that I'm doing, like being reflected because people are bringing it up. It, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And Alfredo, you've got two two kids, right? Autistic children? No, 
yeah so yeah how, how does how do they perceive you now how is the, how has the relationship changed oh it, i'm definitely connecting with them even more because i know my my uh, my partner she's going through her own you know growth and there's always polarity other other things she's got her own trauma she's still dealing with but I know that instead of me just getting involved and trying to control the situation, like I quit doing that, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. Just, just hold my space. And they, they it always come to me in this nice, peaceful manner. It's like, I, know, I always notice a shift, like when they're around me, like the way they behave, and they act, it's just more, it's more harmonious and it, yeah, it, it's changed a lot. So it's, it's definitely encouraged me to step up even more because yeah, the more I do my work on myself, the more my kids reap the rewards and benefits and, I get a more present dad and it's, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. It, I, yeah, I need, yeah, sorry, I'll cut it off right there. It's fantastic because, you know, they, they will not let you get away with anything, right? They are the ah. kids are such great teachers and they are almost a measure for you to see how far you've got. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, because one of my kids, he's got intense autism. Like he's a super sensitive to everything like just like hearing like he's always i don't know what he's just sees all sorts of things hears other things and like yeah to see the change with him and being able to like because i can uh because the more i'm doing my healing the more i can like be there with him and for him because he's very physical he likes to be like physical touch and i'm the i'm like trying, trying towards the opposite so i was like i need my space i need to you know get grounded and like be who I am so that I can be a better dad for you. And it's helping with that. Cause yeah, he, he's very physical. And I, I got to like be on top of my game, got to be present for him. And it, mm. I'm able to hold space more, more with him now, which is nice. Cause I haven't been able to do that because I'm just like, ah, it's just, there's too much stuff going on. Got to hit the salt bats harder so I can detoxify those other energies and yeah. just like avoiding other people that want to like fly, fly to me like a fly because everybody wants to touch me it's like yo don't fucking touch me like all right i fucking told you i'm gonna keep <laughs> just being persistent with it you know it's like they, it's it's ridiculous because people like their hands are like magnets they're like no i want to touch you up right like holy shit it, it, it's seeing their programs because everybody has these built-in programs from like touching each other and it's like and i'm seeing their programs run and i was like no i'm not part of the program like I'm, I'm maintaining my energy field for myself and my family. And then if I touch just because it's on my terms, not y'all's terms. Like y'all just sneaking up on me like little, <laughs> like little flies or fucking mosquitoes. <laughs> um, What's, what comes to mind though is uh, there's obviously something that uh, there's obviously a capacity that you have by, by either allowing other people to touch you or by you touching others yeah so that could be i mean you know like what you do with your meat and everything as you touch your meat but that's very much a healing capacity that you have right have you yeah. ever into doing any any hands-on healings with people um every now and then it's it's kind of far and few because my energy reserve like when i got the energy or i'm like tapped in and the right synchronistic moments happen. I'm like, all right, perfect. Awesome. You're, you're napping. I can do a little cranial cycle therapy or my partner's in a you know decent mood and she's relaxed enough that I actually help her out and heal her, which doesn't happen too often, you know, but yeah. yeah. But yeah every, every now I do, I, I definitely like, I notice the shifts in my energy and then like, you know, I see the planes flying around me, all these things happen. Cause I know there's like, there's a huge shift when I do it. I just got to do it more, but it's like, I got to do them work. Work, do more work so I can do the work like the, the healing work the hands on well you know uh, it's been most oh go ahead it's you know it, it's it's maybe just also just acknowledging that it's not the core energy that you're giving away it's just you're channeling the energy the source energy is coming through you you're just the vehicle so even if people want to touch you obviously not indecently or anything you know um if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you. It, it's just coming. You're basically just the intermediate, yeah, coming through, channeling the energy, source energy to them, which has no impact on you, which is healing anyway, you know. You, you never, ever tap into your own healing, uh, into your, what do you call it? The, <clears throat> what 
Well, it's not your personal energy. Yeah. It's just, you're just channeling the healing energy, the source energy, whatever energy you want to call it. Think of like electricity flowing through a plugged in lamp. The lamp doesn't give its own energy to yeah. make the light. It That's pulls fun. that electricity through and shines the light. I need to acknowledge that more. I think I just, I think it's the way I've been viewing it. Like, so I'm still changing my perceptions of how I view things. It's like, yeah, being the channel. I, I, it's just, you know, like, it's, it's nice to hear from y'all because y'all got the experience and I, I like to hear the wisdom you'll have. It's the next level of uh, sovereignty where you can acknowledge that capacity because if people want to touch you all the time, well, there must be something to it, right? Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's just compassionate. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm so torn. This has been my biggest thing I've been working on because I'm trying to understand because I want my energy field to be nice and clean and pure, but you know, everybody, they, they, they touch me. Like it's, it, it's, it's never like an aggressive touch. It's like, they like a compassionate touch, like a pat on the back or whatever. It never feels bad, but at the same time, like I don't want anybody in my energy field. That's been like my biggest conundrum trying to. Okay. You know, so all you, you, you can do this, just let go of that belief, yeah? There's a belief system that's still anchored in a pattern, a thinking pattern within you that says, if somebody touches me, they're taking my energy. Is that really the case? Or they are contaminating with me with their energy. As a sovereign self-mastered being, um, none of that can actually impact on you because you're just going to run it straight through gonna go straight uh, yeah that's yeah because the, the more you go into that oh i have to protect myself because otherwise you know it's going to impact then the more you create the resistance and the more it will bite you in the ass yeah it's really look at if there is there still a belief that is probably not yours anyway that you still carry that you have to protect yourself in order not to um lessen your energy cleanliness or something like that. You can look at that and then just let that go, pot and pock that and then see. Because it will stop literally. When you let the hook go, nobody's gonna come and want to hook anymore. Yeah. So everything yeah. will allow you to let that go right now. Yeah. Whoever you bought that from, just destroy and uncreate all that um, and see how it pans out. I mean, it's that simple nowadays. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. I also think, Alfred, that sometimes, oh. you know, when people are reaching out to you and they're trying to touch you, it may be that they're giving something to you that they actually want. Because I think as, as a kind of, in general, I think we're all kind of starved of, of just the human touch. I, I, I think that... Yeah. Um, I, I did work some with for some years with children who have autism and some of them do have issues around touching. Um, but sometimes actually it's what they're it's what they need, but they they they're resisting it. And and if mm -hmm. you know if you do some rough play or something with them where you're involved with touching and rolling and all of that kind of thing, it seems to regulate them and bring them back into their body, you know. And I remember working with a little boy once who used to say to me, uh, he was in a, a school situation and he used to say, you know, I I I'm really I can't stop laughing but everybody is cross at me for laughing. And he, I was thinking of him as you were talking and I used to say to him, okay, and what is it about you laughing all the time? And he said, oh, my body is just full of laughter. And I used oh. to say, yeah, wasn't that just so beautiful? And I used to say to him, awesome. hey, you know, just, just let's finish this and then we'll go outside and we we'll laugh. We, the two of us are going to laugh. And if he wasn't able to wait to finish, we'd go outside and we'd laugh and then we'd come in and we'd finish whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No. When we go outside to laugh, he used to say, I can't laugh now. And I say, okay, so you can only laugh inside then. That's really interesting. And he said, yes. And then he used to think it was so funny because when he was inside, he, he couldn't laugh because he was told he couldn't laugh. So it was just, wow. it was like 
to the opposites. And that's what's coming to me there when you're talking about the touching. And because, again, they did have issues around touching, but it was always what they wanted. It was always what would make them happy and more embodied. And they would often reach out. And one of them used to be always, you know, twiddling with my hair and used to love the feel of my yeah. hair. Yeah. So it, it's, it's really it's really quite a big topic because I do think that generally, you know, the difference it would have made to me in my life. Like I just talk for myself. At different times in my life when I would have been upset or challenged or whatever, the difference it would have made if somebody just reached out and held my hand or patted my shoulder or, and I'm, I am inclined to do it, I suppose, a little bit myself. I, I'm inclined to, you know, just put my hand on somebody's arm or something and say, thank you or well done. Or there's something more to the words, I think, if there's the touch as well for me. Yeah. There's, you know, I'd also like to say that I'm a toucher, but not necessarily touchy, touchy, feely, touchy. I, when I shop, when I go to shop, I have to touch things. It's almost like a level, I get my awareness through feeling, you know, not just seeing. Yeah. You know, when I go to the, to the markets, I touch everything. It's like people think you want to buy it. No, I don't want to buy it. I just want to touch it. Because <laughs> this is often I'm, I make choices through touching, you know. I know. It's level I know. Of, of, you know, When you're shopping, sometimes there's signs up that says no touching. And I, I, I just... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that exists for my reality. <laughs> it's 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 interest. It's it's really a, a decision uh, or a choice uh, mechanism for me because I can look at it and think that's really nice, and then I touch it. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I just need to, you know, it's it's an energy exchange of some kind. Yeah, maybe maybe the things just want to be touched. Hey, it's not me. <laughs> they want to be touched. Maybe you want to be touched. Don't even know it. And your son is like, okay, I give it to you. Mm. Or maybe the <laughs> others just want the touch. You know that, and and it, and their way of doing it is just to touch you. And there might be something inviting in your energy, Alfredo. You know that that you would attract that i mean I, I i would say that there is i would say there's a warmth about you that actually would attract that kind of you know a lady who wouldn't want to touch him right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'll be i'll be <laughs> yes. absolutely yeah no there, there is something about that yeah there's lots of stuff Going on, Lana, what's, what's Lana saying? Mary, you reminded me of an aunt of mine who used to laugh after every sentence she spoke. No, I'm thinking that her body was also full of laughter. I mean, what a great body to have, right? I know. I thought, I, got it. I thought it was the loveliest thing to, for somebody, from, for a child to say, because it was so true. He just spoke for how, how he felt, you know, my body is full of laughter. Yeah. Too, too many people have have uh, laughter beaten out of them when they're young, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. Literally. I this want is a my serious body situation. To... <laughs> I want half of my body to uh, be full of laughter too, Mary. <laughs> no. That's quite interesting that that little child said that to you. Because as I was saying, my aunt, I, I used to wonder, why is she laughing every time she spoke a sentence or say something to you? And now you've triggered that in me. Um, uh, she just passed away less than a year ago. Uh, but it's so interesting that um, now I'm thinking of her as her body being a filled of a laughter. So that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can remember your time in school, but I do remember certainly when I was in class in school, like laughter was absolutely infectious because we shouldn't be doing it. So if somebody started and you could see them shaking, then the next person would start and it would actually travel the whole way around the class. And I do remember struggling. Oh my God, it was such a struggle to, to hide it because you, you couldn't show it, you know? And that's what made it even funnier. 
<laughs> I'm laughing now even thinking about it. What I had to do with my body, the constraints and trying to keep a straight face. And oh, my God, it was just, you know, you, but when, when, when we'd come out actually from that, you would feel like you, you had such a release. You'd have to sigh and release, you know, just because of all this energy that you were that was sneaking out of your body uncontrollably and you were being watched by the system and was like, oh, dear, you know, get outside right. the door. <laughs> I, I I think There's I spent a... half of the time outside the door because of the laughing. Group Müller outside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is a um an Indian shaman a uh, sad guru that uh, when he would laugh, his whole body would shake, his tummy and everything. And I would just so enjoy watching him laugh more than anything else because. Um, I think to myself, how can I get my whole body to shake like that when I laugh? I think it's something that is either natural or you have to practice it. <laughs> but it's, it's really just watching him would make you start laughing because of the way his body <laughs> would react to laughter. Yeah. The whole body would shake. <laughs> That's what I mean, Lana, that is so infectious. When you see somebody's yeah. body shaking and you know they're trying to resist it, that's what makes it so funny because you can see their struggle trying to resist it. So then the next person starts and, you know, I, I have do have memories of that from school. And, and it's, it's interesting that I did work with a child who had exactly the same experience. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. There seems to be a resonance though with certain that there are very few people in my life where I can laugh that my belly aches and tears mm. come down. Um, I had a friend of mine, she lives in Australia now, she was one of them, and, and I'm lucky I've got my daughter. She is, she's one of those. I can laugh with her like that. And That's then Paul, Paul stands next to us, he has no idea what's going on. I he's don't. Just, we're just completely, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they're not that many. There's different kinds of laughters, you know, you know, but uh, mm. yeah, fabulous. Oh, that's such a beautiful note to finish off on, isn't it? Let's grab that laughter energy. Take that wish, yeah. add it to the symbol that you got, throw it into the ring, add it. We need it. Keep it close to your hearts. <clears throat> like they said, yeah. laughter is the best medicine. So the medicine for the day is ending with laughter. Absolutely. That's a beautiful note to finish off. Well, we've done two hours, so that's not too bad, actually, guys. Thank you very much again for being here. Thank and you. I hope you enjoyed the, the meditation and you keep the symbol with you and you work with your rings and everything. And um, thanks for being here as usual. And I'll see you next week. Thanks, yes. Martina. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, Thank Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.